Battlecruiser again. Ragnarok has no idea that this is BC, nor that this is Mac. Yeah, yeah, I think he, he showed just enough to mislead him. Mm -hmm. Very good red herrings that he kind of threw out there. And there's BC the jump, TB. the spire has already started, so now Ragnarok knows. This is rough. Already five drones have been killed. He backs away from the Queens. Here come the Hellions. Ooh. I don't know the Ragnarok's ready for this. Oh, oh Bane's looks like just he is. connecting <laughs> beautifully. Yeah. Shuts that down. Seven drone kills. Clean that right up. Uh, five of those were for the BC, though. So the Hellions not doing nearly as well. No. Now he's going to come into another location. Just any drones he can kill, he'll take. Yeah, has to back up for now. Of course, he can wait there for quite some time. Yamato on the way. Might wait for the second BC to warp in here and then join the fight right on top of these queens. Double Cyclone coming up. Spire going to be finishing. I think we're going to see Mutas again. His opening with Mutas in the previous game was very good. He got, what, like yeah. 10 SCVs, force of turrets, force the BCs to kind of sit back a little bit longer. I thought it was really high quality what he did. So more Muta's coming out. Now are they gonna just chase this BC over here in the top right until it has to TP out? We've got Hellions coming in here to poke. Might draw the Muta's away. So the Muta's are just gonna come down here now, over by six o'clock. I think there's a Thor there. That's what I thought that's what I, I thought that's what I saw. I definitely see a couple Cyclones running around. Gonna get some lock-ons and push those back for now while he's making his turrets. Seems like the Muta's not doing anywhere near as much as the last time. No, not at all, really. But he's continuing to make them. Thing is, I you don't really want feel like... some damage out of them, right? Yeah, I you... wonder what the number is to stop at a moment like this. I think, I think he'll probably fly around with about how many he's about to have and then maybe do that Corruptor jump in again as well that seemed to again that that all stuff all that stuff seemed to work pretty well yeah he's going for the melee attack once again which tells us he probably does want to go for ling bane we'll see if he goes bane speed again wouldn't mind to see him go for infestors with this though as opposed to just mass baneling i think with fungal you can you know the the fungal ling bane composition is going to fare a bit better than just making 50 banes actually well, lock things down and get the surrounds and uh, get the connections. Yeah, I think the, the, the Baneling play, especially on the planetary as well, was a weird play back there. Mm -hmm. But I think he can make the adjustments more easily here. He's already experienced this once with Maru. Three Thors being made, another BC as well. Roach Warren and Infestation Pit. I really want to see not just the Hive, uh, but some infestors come out. I think that's really important to see from Ragnarok. He's going to have I, a surprisingly large amount of meters. I, I guess sledgehammer his way into whatever position he wants to get in and just try to end the game there. Is this Ogres or Gamer? This is something like that. Ogres or Gamer, perhaps. Perhaps a different type of, of animal. <laughs> this is maybe Cyclops or Gamer. <laughs> Cyclops or Gamer. He's only eye, got one eye One for eye sure. Zerg, you know. Yeah. Three fingers on his hands, and <laughs> just only Banes and Mutas. All right, coming in and actually trying to fight the BCs. So he's got one eye. He's like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> he's got so many Mutas right now, Tasteless. A lot of turrets being added on. Has Lings, has Banes. This is... This is an interesting game once again. Like, I'm, I'm, at, I'm really enjoying these strange positions. This is like candy for my brain right now. I'm just like watching. It's like, what are you going to do, Ragnarok? I think you're dead. Like, let's see. Well, I don't, I don't think he's he's drawn this game out to a point where it's that good for him. I mean, he's got a lot of the map, but I feel like this Unicomp is very scary. Oh. He's he's going and he's, he's getting an Ultralist Cavern. Now, Ultras actually can fight against Thors, right? They do great against Hellions. Huh. This, this could be, like, a very large and dramatic attack into a tech switch. 
right? That's something that can work against mech, where, like, you do a big attack, and then you see what's left over for mech, and you counter it super hard, right? Yeah. Like, if the Thors end up winning, but he's killed everything else off, maybe you just make a bunch of Ultra Ling. Okay, Flyer attack is done. Is this the moment where we're going to have the actual attack? I mean, we've seen Zerg build up to this. I'm just waiting for something to actually happen. Yeah. And on honestly, I, I was dead wrong, by the way, about the direction this game could go, and it's the same thing again. Split map. Mm -hmm. But he, Ragnarok's playing it differently. Oh, on the hatch. Look at that. Mm. He does not even care about the sport at all. Just kills it. Watch all right, this. Time to <laughs> zoop out. Nice. Oh, we get the zoom in. Ooh. That is a good ability. Five more turrets being made. He just keeps making turrets. <laughs> yeah, well, it turns out they don't cost supply. Uh, we're getting to the point where gas and minerals are banking up very high. Zerg does have a lead, but Terran's not too far behind. Well, whenever they have a fight, it's going to be efficient for Terran. Right. Uh, yeah, I want to I want to see the unit tab right now pretty badly, honestly. Oh! Gets one. Right, yeah, Terrence point. just trading beautifully here. This is the underwater to... map where you kill them and they float up. <laughs> it's funny that nothing moves differently, though. Yeah. I don't know about you, Tasis, but I'm just as fast underwater as on ground. That's exactly what it looks like when I'm underwater until I get blown up. <laughs> okay, another big fight underneath these okay. Thors. Uh, they do a good job. Their damage was, uh, the output was fast enough that basically most of the mutas survived. Flame Hellions coming up, wiping out some of these drones. Oh, flying over some mines here. Yeah, very good mine connections there. Supply out, though. It really feels like Maru is the one making problems. It, it just seems like with all these fights that are happening here, it's not, they're, they're, they're not fights that the Terran, uh, is, is getting behind in any way, right? Let's see how these Banes connect. Again, Banes not really connecting on their targets. If Banes don't kill anything or add to the damage that did kill something, you've lost resources in the long run. You traded it efficiently. It's very often the case with Banes. 3-3 uh, three, three is done right now for vehicles. All right, turns with the Mass Corruptor Muta to take out the VCs, but they do jump away. Muta's clearing out the rest of the Thors that were in this battle. Maro remaking. Blink. Not blinks, uh, teleports away as well. Yeah, rolling in now. Uh, it doesn't really have mutas left, so the Corruptor's just diving over everything to try to kill these BCs. And, I mean, they will end up killing them. Going to be a bit costly. All the Banelings rolled in at the same time and ended up, like, connecting his Thor's. <laughs> wow, you can really see what SCVs can do with the repair there. Yeah. Okay, both players over 80 workers. Some Ultras being added in now. Such a different ZVT than what we had with Dream and Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. Now we can see the Ultras actually put some real damage out. Queens fall and then force some transfuses. We don't see those transfuses, though. Those have to end up running. Don't forget, uh, Thors do really big single target damage as well, so they can fight Ultras. But Ultras do do good damage against Thors as well. Okay, so how much of the resources in the top left and the two lower right bases have actually been soaked up? I think very little. Yeah, because it seems like they're mo almost more like placeholders here. By the way, a Greater Spire is going to finish. I don't know if we're going to have another situation where battle cruisers are going to be Yamato in down uh, Broodlords. Granted, yeah. there's not as many battle cruisers this time around. The Ultras uh, having a little bit of a hard time. The Siege Shank in the back definitely adding a ton of damage there. Well, that one Ultra looked like it was running away, but it was already dead, and it didn't know it. A lot of damage being put down onto Ragnarok here. He does not have a mineral bank anymore. That's true. And I, that's how it, you know you, you can kind of uh, divine where this game is going to be going here, is that the minerals are getting very low. You can get a lot of stuff with ah! gas. Whoa, we went through a corpse of the Ultra. We went through the head of a Corruptor, is what that was. That was what that was? Yeah. I feel like I was Sonic jumping through one of those little rings right now. <laughs> it's the 
Auto turret saving the planetary, okay. Okay, so um, there's still a high amount of minerals and gas here for Maru. Now I would imagine all he has to do is make hell bats to kill the Lings and keep these yeah, Thors alive. Yeah, because you really do need the Lings with the Ultras to fight against the Thors. They screw up the AI uh, and they add a ton of damage. It's like just Ultras alone don't beat a whole lot. We're watching the Gundam fight right now. Quite a few Gundams, in fact. Comes out with those Lings and Ultras does clear out the rest of the Thors. I can't believe we went through a, a Corruptor's skull back there. It was a good catch. But look at the supply difference, 191 to 131. So not only is Zerg hurting economically, but he can't rebuild the way that Terran can. Now Terran's minerals are down, mm -hmm. but we're maxed out. That's the big difference here. Yeah, there's still a there's good amount of workers. Not a lot of drones mining in the top left, Artosis. No, there's not. And now the Hellbats are here with the rest of the group. I and think it's going to be the robots versus the... Kaiju. The Jaegers Kaijus. versus Kaiju. That's right. These are the Jaegers. They tried building the walls. That was the early part of the game as Terran. They didn't work. <laughs> they have to uh, use the robots to fight the Kaijus. And the thing is, the um, uh, Hellbats are basically just chewing through the uh, Lings. And then the Jaegers shoot down. You know, these are, these are like Tier 2 Kaijus right now. <laughs> yeah, no, these these ones are weaker ones. You don't need the nuke against these. Just to these. be clear, the kaijus were dinosaurs. Remember that part? Yeah, they throw yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that part crazy? of the movie out there? They're like, by the way, they're dinosaurs. I'm like, oh, what? what? <laughs> they just like, keep moving on. I'm like, did you say they're dinosaurs? It's a 3cc build. So he's switching up uh, a little bit. He's going for the people that pilot the mechanical units. Just to be clear. I wish they were just robots. He's making kaiju pilots. <laughs> or Jaeger pilots, sorry. Yeah. Spire 1-1 coming up. A little bit quicker on the 1-1 one, one here for Maru. Very well-timed uh, armory, so he's not going to miss that 2-2. Two, two. That's one of the biggest flaws we see in Terrans, by the way, is yeah. a late armory in Terran vs. Zerg. Yeah. It's insane how often we catch people really slow starting their 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... It's actually one of the most important things ever. It's very important to be doing it, but, yeah, I guess things are going so fast. and Sometimes yeah. people forget stuff, man. I mean, I yeah. know... It's happened to everybody. When well, you come back, you're like, oh, my God, I wasn't upgrading her. Oh, I didn't make that building. It's understandable if you lose your armory because you're, like, thinking about watching Kong vs. Godzilla yeah. the night before, you know? I'm thinking about the, the, the fact that the Hollow Earther theory was right in Kong vs. Godzilla, and they still couldn't even make that interesting. It's <laughs> just... Wait, is that theory not real? No, it's real. <laughs> okay, I thought so. Yeah, don't worry. We're the right kind of round earthers there. Because there can't be anything underneath the earth but hollowness since it's flat, right? <laughs> so, like, that's when I knew hollow earth was real. Me and our toes have done jokes about flat earthers and reptilians, and we get at least one tweet from some crazy person. Always different. Like, you know, that's not really that funny, actually. <laughs> it's probably not. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> you're right. It probably shouldn't be. Um, so Terran's uh, continuing to, to expand out. Mm. I think, I'm sorry, Zarg is continuing to expand out, but Terran's doing an okay job. Uh, taking these fights. We did have that devastating loss with all the Hellions that early uh, on, but it's not that much of a big deal. No, it, it hasn't uh, hurt him too badly, but Ragnarok has a wonderful amount of uh, drones right now. He does have his 2-2 on the way, a good amount of mutas on the map. His creep spread uh, is all right. It's it's not as good as we've seen in some of these other games, but obviously Maru is back to playing Bio, so able to keep that much further back. Yeah, us getting into a much more common uh, TVZ here. Well, let's see. Maro's pretty masterful at, at games like this. Uh, certainly, this is the games Ragnarok had planned to play, by the way. Yes. He probably was not expecting double mech openers. See, definitely a, a nicer game with this as well. Chasing down these medevacs. That has to turn. Trilling Claw is going to be finishing here for Maro. And the Infestation Pit, that looks like pretty good timing on that, actually. Yeah. Can probably go smoothly into his 3-3. No easy spot to attack in here is Terran. The, uh, basically the entire right side of the map is, is pretty secure as Zerg. Terran will eventually have to find some location to try to hit. The creep spread getting a bit better as he expands towards the top right. I like that location. Six o'clock going to be a lot holder, harder for him to hold, rather, with that high ground above it, and then also the creeps right on that side a lot weaker. 
Maru is kind of expanding down into that area. And based on that sensor tower, I believe he's going to continue to expand to the south rather than to 12. And that should allow him to try to deny the bases of Ragnarok in that area. Whereas Ragnarok is maxed out. There's a chance Maro is a little bit weak and could be vulnerable to this attack in a location I think he expects is basically safe because it's walled off. Mm, maybe. So let's see how this goes. He does goes. have that sensor tower there. It looks like he's going to lead the way with the wings. This and is smart. And then blow it up. Send in another group here to set off the Widow Mine. Coming forward now. That is a lot of Banelings. Could deal quite a bit of damage here to Maru. Yeah, this Definitely is going to get some SCVs. Oh, I think he could have gotten a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I like the setup for the attack. He has just a few Banes blow it up, and then just a few Lings come in, and then the entire army comes in to fight. Yeah. A little magic boxing going on on the Thor. We'll be able to knock that out. Not much more than that, though. Ragnarok could win this game. Yeah, I told you you'd take him out. Uh, another attack coming in here. Enough Lings and Banes. Man, you just cannot touch the ground. Floor is creep. It's creep lava. My kids love playing the floor is lava, but when I say it's creep, they scream and run away. Yeah, they scream because there's no banelings are gonna connect to do well, splash damage to them. First thing I taught them is do not step on creep. Uh I I think that things are starting to kind of fall apart for Maru. Yeah. He's I not mean, able to really put aggression on here. He's having moments that are very, very efficient. And you know what? Maybe as we get into ultras, we can see him fight back here, right? Like, he's he's going to have yeah. a lot of marauders. His micro is very, very good. And if you don't oh, attack oh, with the oh, ultras oh. correctly, you're going to be in trouble. All right, now he can get these two bases here, the one on screen and the one just one screen above. He also has an army that's going to be hitting uh, in the northeast. Oh, on my God. Turret. Great repair there on that turret. Slows him down quite a bit. Some Marines coming over, but the Muta's getting a little bit of damage, at least. It's 3-3 going to be finishing up for the melee units. Ultra speed almost done. Yeah, Single I... Ultra coming to fight. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I was saying that uh, Ragnarok might win this. I think he's getting a little bit too out multitask because this base goes down. He is getting it, a little bit out multitask. And it's funny because you said as the Ultralists come, and even though the Ultralists are supposed to be a superior component to the army, mm -hmm. uh, Maru can micro against him. Yeah, yeah, he can start to get very efficient. Ultras are expensive, and you have to attack with them correctly. They're really great defensively. Dude. You group them with Lings and Banes. So sis. Yeah, Maru picking off yet another hatchery, perhaps. And Maru's yeah. putting out so much damage. Yeah, and again, he can pick up and escape. And he does it over here. This is the thing about Maru. He's just kind of faster. And um, my god. It, yeah, it's insane. I mean, our observer can barely keep up with all the fights that Maru is microing at individually. He is being so efficient here, but. You know, Ragnarok still has a bit of an economy. Maybe he can clean this uh, up. I don't think Ragnarok has much of an economy anymore. His minerals are not going up that fast. He's got a plus 2,400. Yeah, Maru's is way bigger. Oh, yeah. look at him. Well, a lot of that is mules, right? Yeah, so, but I mean, that's that's money, <laughs> like, right? Like, he is yeah, definitely mining it'll, minerals. It'll mine him out, though, is what I'm kind of getting at. Yeah, but I think Ragnarok that's even... continue to hang on. I think it's fine, because he can keep growing. I mean, he's hitting the Zerg at so many different locations. What are you, a gaming CEO? There's no infinite growth here, Tasteless. I'm a Eventually gamer. You I'm run the out. CEO of eGaming, Artosis. <laughs> Never forget that. Um, Zerg's going to double Expo down in the bottom, and a third Expo making it a triple back in the upper right. But can he actually hang on to all these? Now a pretty bold and brazen attack mm. here. Uh, a lot of Banes, I don't think it's enough. Yeah, well, he's going to have to turn around. You can't fight at that planetary against the Thor, I don't think. Well, hold on. He, he's going to put the oh, Thor back. Oh, a few more Banes coming in right now. Hold on, hold on. I only see Marauders. Oh, he actually blows it up. Beautifully done. The Marauders coming oh, back, though. But he can swap an orbital back in. And, you know, Ultralists are great at pushing in, not so good at retreating. This was a lot of the gas, dude. Look at the gas uh, income right now. Mm. Okay, that's gone. I don't know how that died. Maybe it was on screen. It's too much for me to follow. <laughs> yeah, he just sort of 
out powers him, and immediately he's going down. He scans the upper right, confirms nothing that's there. And he's going to find that there's not much left anywhere here for oh. Ragnarok. Basically one functional base. Everything else is a target. Here we go again. And Ultra Ling coming in, but there's not a lot left. 30, 40 army supply left. GG. GG. Maru just too much. And it's crazy because Ragnarok looks like he's 